What's going on guys? Welcome back to LLF Games and today we're going to shoot a first impression slash POV drive on this Mark 7.5 Golf Fire. This is the next giveaway car via LLF Games and if you are new to LLF Games uh, this is a car competition page where I give you guys a chance to win a car for a couple of pounds and this is the latest edition. So sorry that I've not shot a video any sooner. So we're going to do a little walk around. We'll go over the base spec. We'll go over some of the modifications I've done then we'll go hit the road, do a POV drive and then we'll also get the drag out and measure some zero to 60 some hundreds to 200 kilometer times and also some standard quarter mile time so yeah let's do this onto the Mark 7.5 Golf R. And let me tell you, this thing, like I'm only choosing cars that I like the look of. Like this is, for me, the ultimate spec Golf R. Some of you will know I used to own a Mark 7. This is a 7.5. Uh, so you've got like the facelift bumpers, you've got the facelifted lights. They just look so flipping sick. Moving on to the side, uh, you've still got the chrome mirrors. Round to the rear, you've got these darkened tail lights. I think this might be an upgrade from the owner. Factory spec, so it's got optional extra 19 inch alloy wheels, uh, wearing P0 tires. Clearly the owner looked after his car. There's a lot of people that have these cars and they put crap tires on. Another optional extra is this panoramic roof, which I don't know, for me, it makes it look like it's wearing a Superman cape. When you see one of these cars on the move with a pan roof, I'm telling you, cannot be beaten. Interior wise, so 7.5 looks so much nicer. Let's get that off. So you've got the uh, face lifted seats. One gripe I had with the Mark 7 Golf R's was the black with white bolsters, especially when they got dirty, they looked really cheap, man. Uh, I would say you don't even need to upgrade to the Vienna levers now. That's what I actually had in my Mark 7. Seven speed dual clutch transmission. You've got the wider infotainment system. It's all touch, there's no volume buttons. It's a lot wider than before. This was an optional extra before. I'm not sure if it still is an optional extra in this 7.5. Uh, you've got the virtual cockpit similar to the Audis and honestly guys it's such a premium feeling car you've got all this air coming in because of the pan roof you close the door you've got this blue led strip along the door cards and also down here you've got the r kick plates with the blue led guys this is like i've said guys 10 times now but um it's a really really nice car man and it was only a matter of time that i give you guys a chance to win one and there's definitely gonna be loads of factory options that i've missed it's got 40,000 miles on the clock uh, it's got a full service history it also has the upgraded audio if i'm correct maybe not so another thing i've not mentioned is the previous owner spent over seven thousand pounds in modifications starting with an upgraded front mount wagner intercooler we've got an upgraded r600 intake one of the reasons why this car looks so much nicer on the eye i'm not sure how it's looking on gopro we're shooting on a super wide angle but in real life this car looks ridiculous it's lowered on eye back springs it's sitting on spacers so the wheels are out slightly it's also got upgraded anti-roll bars and of course we've got that super aggressive maxton body kit so we've got the front splitter the side blades moving on to the rear we've also got uh, a diffuser which just bulks up the rear i mean the golf fires look awesome anyway in my opinion uh, we've also got an upgraded remus back box and uh, driving this car around, it sounds awesome. Shit, one thing I've nearly forgot to mention is it's actually stays to tuned by Awesome GTI. So it puts out around 400 bhp uh, with a DSG box. These cars can easily dip into the three seconds, zero to 60. I have been doing a lot of waffling, so I think it's now time to take this car on the road. Right. Mark 7.5 Golf far. let's slap it straight into launch control. <laughs> what the hell? I have never ever felt a launch control like that on a car. What happened there? God, did you see how aggressive that launch was? What the? Nah, that can't, can't be real. Gotta do that again. That is actually mental, isn't it? Whoa. It almost feels like it's slipping the clutches, but it's not. It's just putting it down perfectly, man. Wow, wow, wow. That is an interesting launch. So awesome GTI tune this car's got. I'm sure they would have upped the clamping pressure on the gearbox as well. The sun right now, it's just amazing, guys. Like, I didn't know the sun was the secret. 
Sounds awesome, man. You know, we've got a real nice heavy weight to the steering. Yeah, when you compare the Golf R's against the S3's, the S3's feel a bit more laid back, a little softer to the touch. You've got to remember that this is basically an Audi, just with a different design. One thing you do notice as well is everybody's staring at it. I think it could be a lot to do when the power roof's open. But silver mirrors with the silver wheels slammed don't look too aggressive. Exhaust sounds lovely. <laughs> Listen to that, boy. Nah, this is uh, this car is so lit, so you can hear the intake up front, and you got that nice rumble from the exhaust. Listen to it. It's a bit far, isn't it? Another thing I'm feeling straight away is the wheel just. As you're turning around the corner, it feels like it's tightening up. I know you've got like the variable steering in the Audis, I think, and maybe the RS7 that I drove that time. That felt the same, like it was getting heavier as you turn. I'm not sure if that's because of the anti-roll bars or the springs or, oh, the sun. Man, it's properly quick as well. It's a true 400 horsepower. Uh, my Mark 7 Golf R that I used to have, um, I had a DT UK box on it. A lot of you think that, you know, because I put the TDR tuner box on my haircut, you don't think I'm like a sellout and, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for money, but it's actually not true. I actually contacted TDR tuner and I really like the idea of not having to rip your ECU out of your car, breaking the seal and potentially voiding your warranty. Even by installing a box, yeah, you can still void your warranty, but at least you know your ECU hasn't been tampered with. I don't know if I've mentioned yet, but it's a two liter turbocharged engine from factory. Uh, you guys know that these are very tunable engines. You would have probably all seen the Alpha video, the 600 BHP Golf R. Literally hybrid turbo, meth injection, couple of small modifications and you can get these to some silly horsepower. But this is the sweet spot, definitely 400 horsepower. You just see the launch control, it's insane. Like what kind of launch? Like it actually launches just like an RS3, yes. That's what it reminds me of the RS3. Guys, a tuned RS3 has one of the most aggressive launch controls you'll ever feel in a car. It's ridiculous. The way it claws into the ground and throws itself down the road. The stock Golf R is almost bogged down on launch. It don't even feel like a launch to be fair on the stock Golf R. This now feels like it's really activating some crazy modes. Seven speed dual clutch transmission. You've got sat navigation. This infotainment is such a nice system. Like it's all touch screen. There's no, oh, there is a volume button. I'd never seen that. <laughs> I was about to say there's no volume button, but I'm sure there used to be a knob on the other one. So as you can see it's touch. As your fingers go near it, it kind of, huh? let's get that back down. See, I think as you go near it, like it sort of senses your hand. I think maybe I'm tripping out. But the virtual display, this is definitely a game changer. Most manufacturers, when they facelift their cars, it's not a huge difference, but this is definitely a massive improvement. One really cool thing I've noticed about this Golf R is whatever driving mode you leave it in, when you turn the car off and jump back in it, it stays in that mode. M cars reset back to default. That I just find really cool, man. You do have a few different modes. You've got individual, you've got normal eco. The petrol is awesome on this. I don't know what the miles per gallon is. And to be fair, I've only driven it two or three times. Well, like I say, it gets a lot of attention, man. And it really does feel like a premium cabin. Like, it's really, really nice. Like, I used to have the Vienna levers. Uh, there was the carbon option as well, but it's all you need. You don't need spec levers, 100%. These look wicked in here. We need to spin it around is what we need to do. Wow, the brakes, jeez. Awesome brakes. Just did like an emergency stop there. Man, I feel like I need to do another launch, man. Get out of the way, we've got an ambulance. Man like Ricky, come on. Save them lives. So we've got a nice lever, flat bottom steering wheel. We've got the extended paddles. We've also got this P1 gauge down here, which I'm not sure exactly what it does. I know that in previous cars that I've been in, they kind of measure your zero to 60s. They check your boost pressure, also your cooling temps and stuff like that. There's a lot of features with those. Let's just go flat here. Still got the ambulance up there. Can't get away from the golf R. Oh, the brakes are lovely, man. Let's uh, feel what it's like into a corner. See that nice and tight, stays on its lines. Man, throws you out the other end. Honestly, the confidence that this car gives you, the way you can place it on the road. Right, so we are stuck in traffic. We may as well just have a little 
chat about the chassis so obviously uh, the Golf R's they have a Holdex all-wheel drive system so it's not a permanent four-wheel drive setup basically when this car detects slip it'll send most of the power to the rear uh, when you're just cruising around town it'll decouple the rear axle and it'll act as a front-wheel drive car which makes this car a little bit more fuel efficient a lot of people do get confused with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive cars they think uh, sorry, they confuse all-wheel drive with good handling. Well, it is. With all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive cars, you get a lot of grip. So, yeah, it inspires confidence and, you know, it feels safe to drive. But it doesn't mean your car's good handling. The Golf R is actually a good handling car. You know, if you really throw it into corners, it will have your back. Like, it won't do anything unpredictable. It's a very well-balanced car. But I can go flat here. No bullshit. It doesn't matter what you do in this car. 100% traction this is definitely doing 60 I'm, I'm estimating uh, pff, three and a half seconds to 60 yeah we're both having it out wow someone's gonna win an awesome car you know that <laughs> sounds sick oh I'm just loving the sun guys definitely love a golf R. one of my all-time favorite cars was the most searched car on the internet for so long like it probably still is this is the car that people want isn't it you know and then the move to an rs3 right so it's time to find out just how fast this mark 7.5 golf r is we're going to be using this black device here which is called a draggy this is magnetic so if you have any type of metal on your dash it'll stick right there you don't have to tape it down or anything obviously there's nothing magnetic on here so that's a bit of a fail. I'll just leave it down here today, which should be fine. Comes with a USB cable to keep it charged. Does last for quite a while uh, without the charger. Guys, this GoPro is killing my forehead. It's like breaking my nose, it feels like. Um, so yeah, this connects to satellites to give you an accurate uh, measurement of whatever it is you're trying to tie so whether it's 0 to 60s 100s to 200s quarter miles half miles miles you can measure any custom time that you want to even if it's 0 to 10 miles per hour so with the application you download on your phone you can actually upload your times to a leaderboard so that everyone in the world can see what your car done so this is the system that people use they're around 120 to sometimes 150 pounds depending on where you buy them from but i'd highly recommend getting one of these forget going to your tuner and saying mate i want a tuner i want 500 brake what you want to do guys is buy one of these devices time your car before it went in and when you get your car back do the timing again find out how much quicker your car is it's not about rearranging torque and power so it feels faster you want it to be faster so that is what draggy uh, is for so sorry about the waffling people we will go hit the road now Oh, f So that is the end of the video. I actually shot the golf off probably last week. Just wanted to quickly update you and let you know that the competition ends tonight at 12 o'clock. So by the time you're watching this, it could be over or you may have just a few hours left. But tick a link in the description, you can still win this car for 11.99. And yeah, gobsmacked at the result. Zero to 60 was it about 3.5 seconds, quarter mile, 11 and a half, 100 to 200. One of them was 8.7. That is a genuine problem. You can definitely catch supercars off guard in that thing. And that's what I'm trying to say by the perfect spec. Stay to tune. You don't need to do anything else and uh, you've got yourself an absolute rocket ship so uh, yeah I am off to go change the tires on the McLaren and I'm gonna go put a set of Toyo R888 R's on and I'm gonna go hit Auto Trader and buy you the next car so yeah I'm out people